it, to have two faculty members from Indiana State University coming here to share with us how they teach online at ISU. And this is Katie who teaches Spanish. And what jo uh, who joined us in the web right now, you can see very well, it, once she starts to talk, the video will switch to her face. That's France. She's teaching uh, French in uh, ISU. So I'm going to just let them to share their secrets with you on how they teach online. OK. All right, as she said, I'm Kate Zimmer, and I teach uh, distance education at Indiana State University. I am a strictly online instructor. I teach 100% online, and I teach a language. So um, you might be wondering how that's actually possible. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I teach five courses online per semester, including the summer. Um, so that's just a little bit of my background. And I've been doing it now uh, full time for two years. So um, before we really get started, for me, um, whether it's online or live in the classroom, I don't like to just be the one always up here talking. So I'd really, I, I'm going to have you guys get in groups uh, because I feel like you bring something to the table about what we're going to talk about. And then I'm going to show you my course and uh, kind of go through uh, what we want to talk about today. So if, if it'll let me. Um, but the first thing I want to do is have you guys get into groups um, or just wherever you guys are at um, and just talk about what is, what is different about teaching online. Is it different? Is there anything different about teaching online than a live class? Or is it exactly the same? So if you could get together and just kind of discuss that a little bit. <laughs> Okay, since I didn't get to go around and hear some of the things, can anybody just call out what's different about teaching online, this group over here? Well, you don't get the personal touch for okay. one thing, okay. um, because it's all online and a lot of students rely on that uh, continuous feedback, sure. even, or even nonverbal mm -hmm. communication. Okay, excellent, excellent. What else? What else is different about teaching online? From this group back here, sounds like you got a lot to say. Let's hear it. Engagement. Okay, what's different about it? Not necessarily anything different. It's okay. a challenge in both traditional and Facebook. Absolutely. And, and online. Okay. All right. What else is different? You have a lot of technology readiness. Okay. We need some orientation for them to do the digital learning. Excellent. Excellent. Great point. What else? Thank you. Your students have to be very self-motivated. Okay. Why? Sorry, I got you right when you took a bite. They're not getting positive reinforcement. Okay. They're not a set time. They have to be in class. They what? Be why aren't they getting positive reinforcement? Well, they could be, but okay. it's a different time. It's a different form. And we also talked about the uh, difficulty of communicating through email sometimes. The way mm -hmm. it can be perceived. Mm -hmm. Right. Sorry, what were you saying? Oh, I'm, I'm saying there's not a set time they have to be in class, so it's okay. up to them to get on there on their own. And get right. Set. Takes responsibility on their part. Any other things? It might require a lot more um, uh, from the students to read, um, whether it's a okay. textbook or lecture notes, mm -hmm. rather than just getting um, more explanations as okay. that individual class needs it with a face-to-face class. Okay. Course Thanks. design. What was that? Course design. What's different about the course design? I believe it's, uh, you should be more careful designing the online course because there are different uh, strategies that are different than a face-to-face -face course. Absolutely. Could you give an example? For example, communication. Mm -hmm. uh, online should be by video or by other um, technology. Rather than face to face. Okay. All right. And uh, anything is involved during, during the syllabus or the activities assignments. Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. Sir? We're talking, though, that <clears throat> online may lead uh, students that have um, personalities that don't lend themselves to participating in a face to face discussion. Okay. 
may be more interested if more willing to participate, okay. or if stu introverted students more willing to participate online, uh, and gender differences. Uh, mm. you, know, you, may, um, uh, you may have female students more willing to participate in class discussion than they might mm. in, uh, in, a, in a traditional class. If Why is that? In terms of uh, gender patterns and communication, sometimes, uh, uh, hard as I find this to believe, men are accused of interrupting more and uh, dominating more in the in the uh, in the conversations, and so okay. uh, you don't have any of that um, in or less of that in in uh, computer media communication. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Did you ha did you want to say something? I think we need keep like everything like make them very well organized. Mm -hmm. Keep the balance like chapter one, chapter two, until the, the end, chapter okay. 15. Okay. Uh, instead of for the assessment, we need to, I mean, convert you can convert the documents to the online test. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. challenging for teachers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anything else? One of the things that we were talking about was just that you know when you get to class, you have them there before you, you get to read other cues mm -hmm. from their eyes, from their posture, from whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's difficult or different when you're online mm -hmm. because you don't pick up on some of those. And how many times do people have problems even in terms of when they're texting somebody or emailing somebody gets offended at something you're doing. Well, they get voice inflection. Mm -hmm. They didn't get this so they didn't know it was a joke. Absolutely. And they got offended. Uh, Absolutely. When you're a person and you have them there, usually uh -huh. you can pick up on those things much sure. quicker. Sure. Mm -hmm. Great points. Great points. Anyone else? Okay. So you, you've talked somewhat about this, the role of the instructor, the role of the learner, how it's different. We'll get to this a little bit later. Um, what I heard, I heard positive things. I heard some negative things. What is, one other thing I want you to discuss is what is your feeling to online learning? I mean, some people are opposed to it. I, I don't want to do it. I don't think it's good for students. I don't think they can learn. Because your beliefs are very important, just like your students' beliefs are very important. If you believe that online learning doesn't happen or it's not as good, it won't be as good your students will not learn if you believe that it's not possible. So it's important to think about what you believe about online learning. So I want you to discuss that and just be honest about it. Do you believe that it can happen? And if so, how? So j just talk about what are your feelings towards distance education. Just a minute or two. I think learning can occur. Now we'll figure out like better ways to Are you related to like that or ways to it's food good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be difficult for <laughs> the topic is difficult for language. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Huge challenge. Okay. We're, we're going to talk about that. It's probably one of the hardest things to teach online. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I would like to hear your experience because uh, Absolutely. I haven't taught uh, um, online courses. I mm. teach Spanish. Okay. Uh, and, I, and the reason that I haven't decided to go uh -huh. to online courses is because I'm not really confident mm -hmm. in the effective effectiveness of the results. Sure. 
-hmm. but, but I have to try, I know, in uh -huh. order to make sure if it works or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although I use a lot of technology in my classes, for uh -huh. example, we use Blackboard and sure. it works perfectly. But um, we stay face to face with the uh -huh. students most of the right. time. Mm -hmm. so. I'm sure Blackboard was a transition using that in the class too. Mm -hmm. Just as going more online will be a transition yes. also. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I just wonder how about the quality? Mm -hmm. How can we choose the quality of teaching? Mm -hmm. like how to evaluate the mm -hmm. effectiveness of this mm -hmm. class? Great questions. Yeah. Great questions. Since, uh, we need some uh, more syllabus mm -hmm. and, uh, to be standard <laughs> syllabus mm -hmm. and to treat the students about their if about mm -hmm. effectiveness. Mm -hmm. And then Absolutely. how to get their feedback. Yeah. How to get their positive feedback and negative mm -hmm. feedback and how to I mean set up the uh, adequate the mm -hmm. not adequate. Mm -hmm. Like what kind of sentence they could say, what kind of language right. they could use. Maybe this kind of taboo this Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, great question. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll bring it back together. <laughs> I appreciate you all participating and discussing. Um, you guys, I, so the question is, we talked about what's different and your, um, what's positive, negative, your feeling towards it. Um, how does the different, um, what is different about teaching online affect the design and the delivery of the course? Because those are two separate things. How you design your course, your Blackboard course, everybody here uses Blackboard. Um, and then how you deliver that course online. Those are two kind of separate entities we want to talk about today. Um, you've already talked about the design and organization. Um, organization, having your site designed and completed before you even start the class, super important. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, and then the instructions. What kind of instructions? How do they take the first step? What to do, do they know where to go? Um, what's the organization of their process that is really, really important in the design of an online course. Um, what about the delivery of the course? How does, how does what is different apply to the delivery? Any ideas? I'm, I'm sure you could probably think of more ideas about the design, too. Well, the design has to be simple and straightforward. Simple and straightforward, yes. Have people click in here. As few clicks as possible, usually they're Good. Excellent. So, Really have to work on the design, and if you get the design and the syllabus down, mm -hmm. everything else starts to take care of itself. Okay, great. For for getting started, how do, how do they get started? I know you guys are are looking at quality matters rubric. Um, what does quality matters rubric tell you to do? How, how do students know where to start? Have, has anybody gone through that here? From the syllabus, no. Are they themselves? No. So, they, so they're taking an online course. Well, how, do they, how do they get started? I mean, they log into Blackboard, and then where do they go? Announcements. Announcements, okay. Start button. Huh? Start button. Start. It says start here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll show you what my course looks like and I know that um, Florence will also show you what her course looks like. Um, the delivery, something that is super different, um, maybe exceeded in the delivery of your online course is how important feedback is. You are not sitting in class with them every day where they're getting the feedback, they're interacting with you. So it's super, super important that you give lots and lots of feedback. Um, online and your assignments also will be a little bit different so that's kind of an overview we'll talk about that more um, as we think about teaching online there's a lot of things that we do in the classroom that we still want to have online what are those things what do we want to do that's the same we want learning to happen how does learning happen live and how do we want that to happen online so what are the things that, that are successful live that you still want to happen online? Don't worry about how. 
You just know that that needs to happen. What are those things? Class discussions. Class discussions. What else? Well, the content is the same. Okay, same content. You st you're still teaching the same thing. You're not changing your subject material or anything like that. What else? Presentation of the information. Okay, you want that to be the same? Okay. So, for example, do you do lectures? Do you do... Okay, so you would have a lecture online. Mm -hmm. Excellent. What else? What else is the same? What else do you want in your classroom? Huh? Audiovisual material. Audio materials, okay. So you could just put those online, of course. Yeah? Their input. Their input. Good. So you want them to talk. You want them to discuss, as you said, class discussions. What else? I want Quizzes, tests, yeah? I want to be able to give immediate feedback. Okay, you want to be able to give immediate feedback. Excellent. Good goal. What else? Think of how your class is successful. What makes it successful? Is it just you standing up there talking all the time? Well, student, interaction. student interaction. Yep, you want that in your, your online class too. What else? Instructor, to be Instructor to be available, right? You're still the teacher. Just because this is an online class doesn't mean they can't talk to you. Good. What else? Okay, some of these were already mentioned. These are the things that I want in my class, whether it's live or whether it's online. I want students to know the purpose to the course. I want them to have an application of why they're taking my class. And I want them to think about that from day one. Um, I want them to believe that they can be successful in my course. They can take an online course, they can learn a language, and they can do it online. It is possible. And I get, I'm going to give them all the tools of how they can do that successfully. It's up to them whether they want to do it, but they can. Um, my expectations have to be really clear. I always give that from the beginning. Uh, Student-centered. I want my students to be deciding a lot of what we're learning, leading the discussions, um, and the active uh, part of the class. Um, I asked you guys your a little bit of, not enough probably, but of your knowledge, your experience, your beliefs, your opinions, because that's important. And I want to know those things about my students. Um, so that's where I start with them. Um, and then I want it to be experiential learning. So they're experiencing it, not just listening to me to feed them information. Um, and then community. I want this, them to feel like they're with other people. They're not just on their own. So you, you talked about that too. Um, so how do we do that? So how do we do, how do, we do it online? Anybody want to start taking this big task? Any ideas? Do your students usually just kind of sit and wait for you to tell the answer? Mm -hmm. Can you give an example? Like, uh, what, what, what you're going to learn about, about this club, about design, all that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm just about to get to the part where I show you what I have with my, my course and how I do it. Um, we've, we've already talked about this, changing the thinking. Um, I'm really liking a lot of the research and things that are coming out now, um, the t TED Talks and even articles that are being posted about um, changing students' thinking about how they're so used to being fed everything. What do I need to know for the test? What is, what is the information that's important? Um, and then just know the right answer. They're not really taking a deep meaning to the learning. And a lot of them think that they're, they're not as, I've heard so many times, I'm not a Spanish person, or you've probably heard, I'm not a math person, I'm not a language person. I just don't, don't know this stuff. And then I get that belief on top of, uh, online classes aren't for me. I, I need to be in a live class. 
Um, so when I have students with those two beliefs, it's really hard for them to become successful. So I think first is something more deeper, which is changing that thinking, um, letting your students believe that um, they can uh, become, they're, they're maybe not a Spanish or a math person, but their IQ, their ability doesn't have anything, doesn't ha is not the number one reason of why they would be successful in a class. Has, have any of you seen the um, TED Talk from, um, or Carol Dweck about what's the number one thing? I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. Um, so it's not IQ, it's not physical ability, it's not appearance, it's grit. And grit is kind of the, the drive to work hard. And I tell my students, you'll be successful in this class if you work hard. Um, and you, f you see the purpose, motivation is the key to, to learning. And that they can succeed in this class and I believe in them. That they can do it. And they, I've got all the tools for them. Uh, they just have to do it. So, in that, with that being said, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work on the student's part, and it takes a lot of work on the instructor's part. So let's talk about your part of how you set this up for them. First, you set it up by getting them started. You've got to equip them with the tools. So Quality Matters says that you need to have something that kind of shouts out to them and says, start here. This is where I want you to go, so they don't just start clicking through all the tabs in Blackboard. So uh, I have, I say it in Spanish, empieza aquí, and then start here in parentheses so that they go there. And I put a YouTube video because I usually do my videos in Tegrity. Is everyone familiar with Tegrity? Who? Okay, so Tegrity is a uh, system, and I can show it to you at the end, but it'll have my video while I'm talking, and then uh, like a screen right here that will show everything that's up on my screen. So I could show PowerPoint. So it's great for talks, lectures, to kind of go over things. So I usually do most of my talking in Tegrity, but some, they have to load that system up. So I need to provide a system that's super easy for all my students to access. YouTube. Everybody can access YouTube. I put the URL here in case they have a problem with the link, because sometimes updates in Blackboard can break the links that you have to outside sources. And then I also have a document here that has the script in case I have somebody with a hearing problem. So, so I'm making it super easy. It's right here. All they have to do is click play. They don't have to go anywhere. Um, I've just said here, it's very important that you get all this information. So in this video, it's very short, and I kind of go over them with the purpose. I talk about what it takes to be successful in this class, um, you know, and go over. I've got it all set up for you. You just have to do it, and I'm going to be here with you every step of the way. And then I, I give them the first three steps that are most important for, you know, getting ready to start the class. They've got to have the technology. I tell them what kind of system I require. I give them, you know, what they're going to need for their exams, like the audio portions, um, what they're going to need for their presentation. So that's all right here. Once they've checked off, okay, I got the technology I need. I know what browsers I've got to use. Then I sh show them if you've got problems, this is where you get help. You, if you need help with Spanish, I give them information for tutors. If they have a learning disability, uh, counseling center, I put all that information here. They're resources so that they can go back to it at any time. This is how they get started. And then the last step is then getting started in the course where I give them the syllabus. I have a calendar that says, when is everything due? And then I have a link that goes to the first assignment. So that's how they get started. Any questions on this part? And I can show you exactly how it works. I just kind of want to give an overview because sometimes it can be overwhelming if I start clicking in, in things. Okay, um, the next thing is I have, I basically tell them once they get started, they are going to live in this tab. This is their homework. So from this tab, everything they need is right here. They don't have to go anywhere else. I have links to discussion boards. I have links to wikis. I have links to videos. I have links to their um, homework. 
uh, any outside source. It's all linked through here. So they'll, they'll just click. And you can even embed the video. So I have a Tegrity video. I have the link here, but just to keep the size so you can see it all. Um, but you can put the link that explains the course schedule and guide. You can embed that video here. Tegrity videos you can also embed. So all they have to do is click play. So it makes it so much easier for the students to actually just go ahead and do it. Uh, there's no excuse. Often they get distracted when they start getting outside. Oh, I'm opening a new browser. Let me check my Facebook. Or um, You want to try to keep them in one spot. So it's kind of here's the schedule. I've got four different sections in the final. And in each section, um, it's a learning module. This is something that you can do in Blackboard. This is kind of like this is a table of contents. They can click on any one of these. But this is an overview like for section two. And all they have to do, you can see up there that they click through each page. So they never have to leave. They just do the first thing, they click to the next one. And it'll say, for example, connect capítulo seis. So then they'll, it'll give the, all the vocabulary information. It'll have a video of me speaking the vocabulary. And then it'll tell them, have the link to do the homework. Then the next thing, we'll talk about some cultural thing that they'll read about, a link to the discussion board. They just click through, do the assignments. It's all in one place. Yes? Are you using a textbook? Yes. I am using a textbook. Um, well, I use um, Connect. I don't know if you're familiar with Connect or Centro. Florence will show you how she uses Centro. But Connect, um, I just provide the link so that they click on it, and then it opens up their Connect work. It's an electronic version. It's electronic. Everything's electronic. They can purchase the textbook, but I don't make them because they have the electronic version. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, that's one way of doing it. Florence does it a different way. There's no perfect way to do it. You have to do what makes sense to you and what you can explain to your students. Um, so this is an example of Connect. So they have their assignments. Um, you know, it has their due dates. Um, Learn Smarts are really great. I don't. Does anybody here use Connect? You use Connect? No. Okay. I won't go into it too much if it's not something that's applicable. But. Um, I also use outside resources. There are so many great resources out there. Duolingo is one of them. It's like a game. Um, it's, it's a lot like Rosetta Stone, if anybody's done Rosetta Stone. So um, I'm actually learning French right now. So um, this is my French page. I'm not doing so well right now. But uh, it gives you email reminders. Um, so those of you who are teaching languages, it's something that I assign my students to do as kind of like a fun thing. Um, but there are resources out there. Use them. Students like to, to do something that's out there. Um, there's Live Mocha where students can interact with um, live people who speak other languages. Um, and we're almost, I feel like I've taken too much time. I want Florence to talk. But here are just some basic tips. Develop before you teach. I mean, I spend weeks redeveloping my class before I teach it every semester. If you're developing and teaching at the same time, you might go crazy. It's, it's too much work. I have a notebook, and it probably sounds elementary, but I have so many ideas as I go throughout. I ask my students' opinions of how would you change this. I write the notes down, and then when it's development time, when I'm not teaching anymore during my breaks, then I go through my list and say, can I do this? I work with an instructional designer um, that we have at the university to say, this is something I want to do. How do I do it on Blackboard? Um, so I encourage you. For me, I need that organization because write it down. So many times you have ideas, and then you forget them. And I can't always do them. It takes a lot of time and work to design. So kind of have maybe a book or a list of where you write the ideas that you want to do. We've talked about one step at a time, announcements, um, the calendar. I communicate strictly through Blackboard because that's where I want my students to find me. If they know I can fi find me in Blackboard, they'll go to Blackboard more often. So even if I email a personal email saying, hey, you haven't done any work this week, I just wanted to check on you, is everything okay? I do that through Blackboard um, just because that 
gives them more. Oh, I need to go to Blackboard. That's where that's where I find everything. Uh, we talked about multiple ways to access videos, organizing your course in a way that makes sense to you. Um, there's no perfect way to do it. You make it yours. Uh, integrity, we talked about that. Collaborate, we're kind of doing that right now. You gotta have lots of different activities. Um, we kind of talked about everything else. Okay. Um, so, I showed you most of the things in my course, and um, I'm going to let Florence show you hers, and then if you have any questions, we can go back and go through, um, you know, the different things in the course. So, I'm going to give the floor to Florence. Are you there? Um, hi, Kate. Yes, I am there. Um, you might have to um, shut off your screen sharing. There you go. Okay, I will start mine. I hope everybody can see. It said it's starting, so it might take a little while. Um, first, can you hear me all right? Yep. Okay, great. Yep, we hear you. Okay. Clear. So, um, I have been teaching online less time than Catherine has been teaching Spanish online. In the first year, what I was trying to do was mostly to duplicate what I was doing in the classroom. And I realized that uh, there is so much more you can do online because you can have more of a relationship with students one-on-one. -on -one instead of being 1 to 30 or 1 to 25 or however many students you have in the classroom. And the students seem to really enjoy um, that one-on-one -on -one attention. And a lot of them seem to be that's why they're taking the class online, is to get more, more out of it or more one-on-one um, -on -one contact with the teacher. So I would like to start by showing you my Blackboard site. And then I would like to show you Central, which is the book that we use um, for online classes. And well, can the you class on start sharing from the top? Um, can you click on start sharing on oh, the top? I'm sorry. It appears I'm the one who forgot the to one. click on the right button. Okay, there it goes. Okay. So you're able to see my desktop now, now right? Okay, super. I will start with the Blackboard site. So as Catherine has mentioned, there is a Start Here button um, for Quality Matters. So when students first come on the website, this is what they see. It's not the announcement page, it's the Start Here button. And I post everything under the Start Here button. As the weeks progress, I uh, post everything on the top so they don't have to scroll down to get to the newest content all the time. So when they actually start the class, uh, this is the announcement that they see. Uh, welcome to French 101. And I have a lot of screenshots on my Blackboard uh, page so that they can see how uh, they have to access their homework on the textbook website. So the textbook we're using is En Avant, and it comes with the central program. Um, at ISU, our supervisors wanted to use the same textbooks for in-class and for online. So we had to base our decision of textbook as to which one had a best or a program that worked well online for the online students and that had all the grammar and everything uh, that we, all the features that we wanted for the in-class students. So this is what they see the first day of class. Um, I have all the instructions on how to purchase their package and so on. And then a uh, description of each button in Blackboard. So what is each button going to do for them, where they have to click, and so on. I will scroll back up to um, so you can see the Blackboard buttons. For my 101 class, I have kept some of them in English, some of them in French. Uh, 102, everything switches in French. So they're asked to read the syllabus and look at the course calendar the first day of class. After the first day of class, I post uh, weekly guides with instructions on how to access all their homework. There is also a integrity video that I do every week so that uh, I show them how to get to the content for every week. I hope I don't give you a headache. I'm going to switch over back and forth to different pages. This is an example of a weekly guide. So it has other assignments. 
again, how to get to Central in case they missed that on Blackboard. What is you that week? And um, Central comes with assignments that students have to record so that um, I can listen to them and record my own feedback, my own voice after this. Now, all the assignments that they will do in, in the classroom are the same in the book. But it says, turn to your partner and ask him this or that. Well, they're online in front of their computer. They don't necessarily have somebody with them. So there's uh, assignments with recordings that I skip and assignments where I ask them to do the recording. So that is specified the first week um, of class. I'm going to go back to the um, Blackboard page. So they have two places where they need to go for me. They have the Blackboard site and then they have Central. Central looks like this. From the student's perspective, this is when they sign on, this is what they see. They have to go to each chapter. I'm going to open chapter one for you. Uh, are the pages loading well? Can you see the content as I see it? Or is it pretty slow at loading? It comes a little slow, but we eventually can see it. OK. I hope I'm not clicking around before you actually get to see the page. Let me know if that's the case. No, you're good. Uh, so each chapter is divided into a communication section, vocabulary section, grammar section, and so on, just like it is in a physical textbook. They have a lot of videos, and students are able to do their homework straight from the electronic textbook. So just like Catherine, I don't require them to get a printed textbook, and most students don't. Everything is right here for them to see. They can click to see the videos, and they can click right here to do the activities. Um, Everything is recorded into a grade center on Central. And then I transfer the grades per chapter, so the textbook homework and the workbook homework. I make two columns in my Blackboard grade center and just transfer them by hand um, over there. Um, as far as um, student-instructor interaction, I'm going to switch back over to Blackboard. What I do on the second week of class is student instructor interviews on Blackboard Collaborate. So this is just like what we're using now um, for Collaborate sessions. And it seems to me that uh, when students can have direct contact, when they can see me and they can hear me and I can see them uh, and hear them on the second week of class, that seems to have helped her retention. Um, I use Doodle polls to schedule these interviews now, so I have the times when I'm available and they just have to um, at the time when they are available, and that basically sets their appointment. And I think that has really helped with retention, student retention, to have this first contact. Once they've seen me and they've been able to talk to me, they feel like they know me better and they email me more. Um, it seems to have really helped. I've only been doing that for two semesters, but I can see the difference. So I do that on the second week of class. It takes a lot of time. Um, if you have five sections and you have 100 students, you need to have 10 minutes per student. That It does take a lot of time. So I only do it once in a semester, but that seems to have helped out quite a bit. Um, as um, Kate has mentioned, I use Tegrity like she does to do my weekly presentations. And this is what Tegrity looks like. So when students log in, um, they, they can see my presentation, they can see my screen, and they can see me. This week I did one on how to set the table, for example. And usually in a classroom, I'll go ahead and bring my table and my tablecloth and the forks and the spoons and the knives and everything. And this time I was able to set it up in my office, right next to my own living room. And I explained everything to them exactly like I would do it in a classroom. Uh, you can do all the clothing items this way. There's really a lot of things you can do through videos that they're going to be able to pause and watch however many times they want to watch them. Now, the students are asked to do their oral self-portrait presentation where they introduce themselves on Tegrity also. It's very simple to use. They just click the record button and it starts. This one student, for example, um, allowed me to use her video as, as an example for you today. But she posted pictures of her family. She has to explain um, her family, their ages, and everything as part of her presentation. So everything they would do in front of the classroom, they can also do online. Uh, students have access to each other's recordings on Tegrity. So I ask them to watch each other's presentation and then 
um, comments in the Blackboard discussion board. So they have more of this feeling of connecting among each other. As Catherine has mentioned, that's really, really important. Um, if you don't have SteadGrid at your university, you can use Blackboard Collaborate for individual student recordings. And um, I wanted to switch over to that to show you what this looks like. So um, you're probably already using Blackboard Collaborate if you're teaching um, online. So I have instructions um, for an assignment where I set up students in pairs. They have to order food at a restaurant. So I create different sessions that have students' name on them. So I tell them to go into their session, and then they will see each other on the webcam, just as you're seeing me now when I'm seeing your classroom now. And they are able to share content just like we are now. And they record their role play. So one is the waiter, one is the customer. And they go back and forth on how to order food and drinks. They record that, and I'm able to grade it after they've recorded it. So this is a really nice feature of Blackboard. Uh, Tagrity works just for one person doing recordings. In Blackboard Collaborate, you can have several people working together recording their sessions and recording um, a conversation that they have created themselves. So that's very helpful. Um, Another feature that we have at ISU that I must say for us is really useful. Um, I put all my uh, homework that is not central homework and exams, so all the bigger assignments that are not central related, that are not related to the textbook, in the devoir and examen tab, so the homework tab. They go in there, and this is where they take the chapter test, their final exam, instructions for the presentation that have to do with integrity, instructions for the role play recording you have to do in Blackboard Collaborate and so on. And all of our 101 and 102 classes also have requirements for students to attend an international event and write a report on it and to write three learning journals through the semester. In their international events and their learning journals, they have to turn them in via a program called Turnitin. Um, if you do have that program at your university, it's very helpful. Uh, students click on View Complete and they just upload their assignments. And what it does is it compares what they have uploaded against everything that has been uploaded via Turnitin from any university, as well as online content. So if they have copied and pasted any information from anywhere, you're going to be able to see that it's plagiarized when they turn in their assignments. If they try to reuse an assignment from another class for your class, you'll be able to see that it, they've plagiarized themselves, basically. Um, so that's been really helpful for online classes as well as classes on campus to use Turnitin. Um, the last thing I will talk about before we open the floor for questions is how you can use the discussion board to create a feeling of community. Um, Catherine has mentioned that she uses Duolingo as an outside resource, and she's the one who got me to use it too. My students very much like it. Uh, by the way, the students are online all the time, but rarely on a computer, I find. Uh, they're on their tablets, they're on their iPhones, they're on a lot of smaller devices. Duolingo has an app for iPhone or for any smartphone. So does Tagridi um, and also does Blackboard. So they're able to watch their integrity videos on their phones. They're able to play the Duolingo game um, as they're waiting in line at the supermarket. And they do. Um, I've asked them how they do things and asked them for feedback at the end of the semester. After I turn in their grade, I tell them, this will affect your grade. Tell me what you liked and didn't like about the class and what you would like to see different. And they said, we would like to be able to um, see the instructions for the homework when we're on the road or listen to the integrity videos when we're on the road. So they're able to do that now um, via the app. So here's a form in the discussion board where they have to post their usernames um, that they've created on the Duolingo website. Um, and I do it for extra credit. Uh, Catherine does it as part of her course. So they can compete as who earns the most coins. It's like a video game. It's set up like a video game. 
and they are really competing. Every week I post who is leading um, in the game, and uh, every week it's changing because as soon as I post so and so is leading, another person gets on. And so um, I have a bit of a carrot at the end of the stick. I give them extra credit points at the end of the semester for whoever is going to be in the top so many. Um, and uh, after they've completed the first two levels, um, giving them extra, extra credit. Also, there's an FAQ forum. I ask students to ask other students questions about the course before they email me. And then they have to um, try to find somebody who answers their question. The person who answers the question correctly, correctly gets extra credit points. And that has been um, successful. It's more successful towards the end of the semester when they need more extra credit points. Uh, <laughs> I wish it was more successful in the beginning of the semester. But that seems to have created uh, more links among students, um, as well as the discussion. So in most of the discussion boards, I ask them to reply to each other. Um, I reply to at least one student before I will grade their discussion boards for the week. So they have to read other students' posts, and they have to comment on them. And that creates a feeling of community. So um, this is all I have. This is how I teach French 101 online. And I hope that uh, it's been useful. And I'd like to see if anybody has any questions. Is there anything you'd like to see that we didn't show you? Anything in our courses Do you have questions about? I have a quick question. What kind of um, faculty support training do you have received from your uh, university in order to get your uh, Sure. Did you hear the question, Florence? Sorry, but I want to hear your question. You might want to repeat that. Okay. She was asking about, uh, I think it's for both of us, just about what kind of training our university gives us to help us with uh, online courses, teaching online. Yes. Uh, I can answer that one. Um, we have a, we have a center called Center for Interpersonal Resources and designed a CIR team, and they were um, really helpful, and now we can go through distance education with the same people they just come back to partners. They hold sessions, just like you're doing a brown bag session, they are host one session on integrity, how to use integrity, so all instructors who are interested will go learn about integrity that week, or they host a session on Blackboard Collaborate. Every week they have different sessions. Um, before every semester, there are questions on how to use the different features in the Great Center in Blackboard as well. And you also have people available you can make one-on-one -on -one appointments to um, help you design an activity or do something online that you were used to doing in a classroom. And uh, they help you transfer it to the online environment. So that has been very helpful. Personally, um, I started out as a graduate assistant, and um, I was teaching live, and then they said, do you want to pilot a course online? I said, I have no idea what I'm doing. They said, that's okay, we're just trying it. And so um, I really started out, someone helped me a little bit with the design of the course, but it was kind of just, and I completely messed it up the first couple times I did it. I did a terrible, terrible job. Uh, I hope, I know I've gotten better. Um, but then... Now there's so much more support. Um, I first took this course where um, they gave a course where they taught you how to teach online, but they didn't really know exactly what kind of tools to give you. Then I became a mentor for that course, and then I ended up co-teaching that course. And so now we provide a course at Indiana State University to help instructors teach online, where it is a lot of work where we help you develop it. So like each week we ask you to develop this First week is like start here tab, make a welcome video, or um, kind of decide how you're going to start it. And then the second week, different different things you're going to add to your course. And then we evaluate it based on quality matters rubric. Um, so that kind of course is, is available to to faculty who want to take it. And then, yeah, did you have a question? I have two questions. Mm -hmm. One, how long is the course, and how after you promote this course, so faculty will be willing to do their anything? And second question I have is that um, who is actually teaching the course and, and what kind of support you actually get throughout the Portuguese, Dr. Mm -hmm. The course is 10 weeks. 
um, because you need, there's no way you can just go to a seminar and know how to teach online. I feel like this probably is just so overwhelming. Uh, and you need somebody, just like in a class, you need somebody that tells you've got a due date for this. I want you to do this part of your course. So each week we look for certain things. Um, so we have it 10 weeks um, or throughout the semester. And it's a huge commitment that, that instructors are making because you're developing a course which is tons and tons of work. We do provide a stipend for student for faculty who do it. Um, I think faculty gets two thousand dollars if they complete the course, and then we have them sign a contract. So they actually have to do the work because when it was first given, there wasn't a contract or there weren't any expectations, and I think it was just a waste. Um, it, to be honest, at first it wasn't run well, but now it's being run a lot better because we've learned from our mistakes. Can I add something to that? Um, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, the, what we do actually, um, uh, developed the one for um, I, for ISU 101 online, 102 online, and they do the same process at Ivy Tech. I'm developing for Ivy Tech Community College right now. 101 online, we'll be doing 102 online in the spring, and it seems those two universities do it very much the same. You get a $2,000 or $2,500 stipend to develop the class. You develop the class one semester. Then it is taught on a different semester. As Kate mentioned before, you would not want to be developing a class and teaching it the same semester. That just is not possible. Or it wouldn't be organized well. The, the design of the class and the actual delivery of the class are totally different things. Um, at Ivy Tech, the class I'm developing right now, any, t any instructor will be able to teach it throughout the state. So I am just actually paid to develop it. And I have to put no to instructor. Um, so that the instructor will know how the class was developed and be able to teach it any semester afterwards. So design and delivery are completely different things. Do you have instructional design specialists here? Yes. Yes, okay. So that's, that's like my go-to person. So when I have, a, like I want to put an audio on my test, I say, how do I do this? What kind of file do I need to convert it to? Or I want to put people in groups so that they can do discussion sessions, and I don't have to be there. I just set up the group room. How do I make a group chat room? Um, or how do I pick the groups? How can I make that just happen without me having to go in and decide everything? And so we brainstorm about those kind of things. So use your resources. You have resources. I, I think you guys probably have a really great department here. And I really appreciate Florence and Katie's time coming here to do us. I give us wonderful presentation. So let's give her a round of Thank you.